Ade Alano, the form string. Chad Dickerson, Etsy. Paul Buhait, Facebook. And the subject matter of the panel was don't fail to scale. And to me, that sounds a lot like don't screw it up. Like you're being, you're getting some success, you're getting some traction. Uh, you know, don't be a victim of your own success. How how would you say that, that the the message of the panel was translated? I I think part of the message of the panel was was actually the opposite. Was that you know go ahead and fail at scaling um, because that's that's a easier problem to solve than than uh, trying than failing at finding the right product. Um, so yeah. Right, and I think related to that is, is don't scale too early. Like, if you're trying too hard not to fail to scale, then you won't scale. So uh, take some risks early. Right. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a question of defining what it means to fail to scale. You know, if you have uh, a few rough days and some sleepless nights, that's not a failure. If your site is down for a year <laughs> and all your users leave, that would be failure. Yes. Um, yeah, the having to Friendster is probably the only good example of that ever. Right, right. Yeah. Well, as a startup, it becomes a question of, you know, what is my core business? And it's not necessarily, you know, getting cloud servers and expecting huge traffic. You know, you're not thinking that you should be thinking of product. How do you transition or what, what kind of, do you have to have a near-death experience as a startup to start thinking about scaling? I would, I would say, I mean, I'm, every day has little near-death experiences. <laughs> and so you just have to kind of look at those cumulatively and, and make the right decisions, you know, to prevent yourself from dying. But I think anyone who works with this kind of thing knows that, you know, literally something happens almost every day that uh, that's, that's a risk, but that's just the way it works. Yeah. I think it's good to have a foundation to understand, you know, what's, what's out there in terms of, you know, to different tools or platforms, but not focus on that too much because, you know, even the most, you know, well-versed technologists will run into something they didn't think about earlier. So it's really, you know, and I, th I think one of the, the more practical things that, that we all touched on was, you know, monitoring and measuring things, um, you know, that, that you probably can't spend too much time in. Uh, probably not very early, but you know, at least after launch, try to you know build that out so you can at least understand what's happening within the application to help you know inform you to make good decisions. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, uh, it, monitoring people, you know, they think of well customer feedback and and but what the monitoring you're talking about is performance. Are you able to deliver? Are you able to connect with uh, customers? So, how are the metrics different in there? Uh, should you be worried about? a millisecond uh, of page load speeds or when does it become a, a concern? It's actually something I think you should be keeping an eye on from the start because performance is actually an element of user experience as well. If your pages are taking a few seconds to load, not only is that probably not very scalable, but that's actually just an awful user experience. So literally while we were writing the code, and uh, you know, everything I've ever built, we would always just keep an eye on speed and never let it get slow. Just keep it always fast. And you know, the thresholds for that, if you want to be, you want to be really fast, you try to keep things like 100, under 100 milliseconds because that's kind of the threshold of human perception. Um, but you know, you can drift a little bit above that and it isn't, it isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. I, I would also say monitor what some people call business metrics. So like at Etsy, we graph every five minutes the number of checkouts in the last five minutes the number of new registrations and sometimes even if your systems aren't telling you like the system load or whatever that something's wrong if you do a code push for example and your your checkouts uh, show a dip or your registration show a dip then you know to look deeper and that's really easy to do how do you know if you're if you're like an m a target or if you're a vc you know potential as far as scalable growth or whether you should just be satisfied with a lifestyle business? I think that's partially a personal decision in terms of how you want to live. You know, uh, obviously 37 Signals writes a lot about this, more of the lifestyle business side of things, and that's fine. Uh, on the other hand, you know, if you want to build the next Facebook or YouTube or something that's really changing the world, pretty much by definition, you're going to have to get really big. And um, typically those companies take investment, they grow fast, and they have a big vision of how they're going to change the world. Yeah. Personal decision, then. Yeah, yeah I think that's a yeah. Yeah, personal decision and the type of product that you're, you're building as well. I mean, um, my previous company was probably fits more into that lifestyle business, you know, category. It's you know, uh, targeted uh, small businesses and things like that. Um, 
I, I would I, w- I hate the term lifestyle business by the way but uh, I, I as an entrepreneur I, I think it, it smacks of sort of uh, yeah just diminutive uh, yeah, it's really two different business models it's not you know I, I don't know I, I don't yeah I, I hate the term but um, you know really it depends on the business model the product and really you know do you want to grow something slowly and organically that that may end up being something big but you just go about it a different way versus trying to you know reach 10 million 100 million users as quickly as possible um, it's just you know two different approaches yeah. so quickly uh, what failure are you most proud of in your own business career? That's a good question. <laughs> okay, while you're thinking about that. <laughs> There's well, so many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is actually my fourth company, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my, my first company was right out of college, and we failed in so many uh, ways. It wasn't anything specific that I'm really proud of, but I'm just proud of the fact that you know, we just took a leap and did it, and we failed spectacularly. But you know, I learned so much from that experience, and um, you know, I talked to a lot of people that are trying to figure out, you know, when's the right time to start a new company and things like that. And and you know, my in my experience, at least, there's no there's no right time. Like nobody, you know, the heavens don't part and say, okay, now is the right time. And you know, customers line up at the door. You just have to you know take that leap. And if you fail, you fail and dust yourself off and and try again, so, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of any, anything specific, but I am, I'm kind of proud of uh, a, a culture that we built at Etsy, um, very similar to what Paul is describing at Facebook, the move fast and break things kind of mentality, and, and uh, you know, I think you have to be comfortable with a certain amount of failure as long as the failure results from people really pushing forward really hard. So, um, I think one of the reasons I love this conference is that the whole idea that, of talking about failure is something people don't talk about enough, and uh, you know, I think it's a great conversation. Yeah, it demystifies it. Yeah, I think um, the fail early and fail often is probably the right. Uh, yeah, as Ade said, getting started is really what what matters. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, I think most of the things I've tried have failed, but they're all lots of little things because you know it fails and then you move on to the next thing. Um, Actually, the thing that maybe comes to mind for me is uh, I had actually tried to build a webmail, web-based email system in um, 1996, uh, just sort of on my own, and uh, it didn't work very well because I didn't. I well, what I learned from the experience is I at the time didn't know how to write lots of software, <laughs> and I learned, but I learned a lot from the experience from doing things wrong that you know in the future I was better at, at doing, doing it. But I wouldn't have learned those lessons if I hadn't tried and failed the first time. When you ended up at Google, is that right? For a while there, or did you? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I, I started on Gmail at Google in um, 2001, late 2001. So it was there was a quite a period from you know, 1996 to 2001. <laughs> the right? dark I was years. Also le- learning other lessons, but the the difference in the approach that I took in 1996 from 2001 is it was kind of the opposite approach. You know, I. I had a very naive idea about how software was written in 1996. And I started in sort of the way people talk about it in a kind of top-down manner of like, well, I'll write this part and I'll write this part. And I never actually built anything that was useful. And with Gmail, I took the opposite approach, which was that uh, the very first version took me one day to write. And then from there, it was just incremental improvements um, from a very primitive first version. Uh, and, and I was using it from day one. So I was always using the product, and for me at least, that's very important to always be using the product because that way you're you're just always tuning and refining your understanding of what the issues are, and also it just keeps me um, mentally engaged. Otherwise, I get bored. <laughs> well, fantastic guys, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, you've been very generous with your time, uh, both with me and with all the other people uh, who have rushed and asked you questions. Any any interesting things come up uh, after the panel with people? People love talking about failure. <laughs> like, yeah. and I would say, you know, uh, you know, ninety percent of like my after work having a beer with like a, a peer or someone at another company, we probably talk about failure ninety percent of the time. So, um, it's fun. I'll drink to that. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Guys. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.